I'm here in Copenhagen for 24 hours and I'm going to take you on a 24 hour tour, mostly a walking tour of Copenhagen to show you what you can do in 24 hours. First stop is breakfast and I've selected a place around the corner from this church. Can you see that? Yeah, around the corner from this church and then we're going to head off, go to the top of the church and then head to the next location. So here's Grod, just going in to grab breakfast. It can be a bit crowded but going in, let's see what they have. So I arrived this morning and first stop in Copenhagen is breakfast. So. Let's have this breakfast. Come and see it. There you go. Hope you can see that. This is a place called Grot, uh, which um, specializes in porridges, uh, those types of things. And I'm going to have this breakfast, then we're going to go and do a little trip. Um, we're going to try and do a walking tour in 24 hours. Most of the walking tour in 24 hours, I'll show you most of what I can in Copenhagen. Not going to do any museums going inside, etc., but just seeing the sights and uh, explaining a little bit. So let's do this. Let's get on. So I got this porridge bowl, um, which is a mango porridge bowl. It's quite big, actually. It's probably enough for two people. Mango porridge bowl with chia and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll show you what that is if you want to see. And then Americana. And that sent me back uh, 119 krona, which is pretty close to, hold on, let me do a quick calculation here. That's basically 16 euros for a bowl of porridge, cold porridge, and an Americana. Expensive here. Okay, breakfast finished. Uh, let's head off to the Spire Church. Uh, Church of Our Saviour, which is just about 25-30 uh, meters from uh, the place which I ate, which is called Grud. I'm not 100% sure I'm into that type of thing. It's healthy. It was a bowl of acai, mango, peanut butter, banana, porridge, and I think some avocado cream type stuff. Um, so here we are, and uh, just my luck, they're doing some building works on the building, but okay. You can still go inside from what I read. Yep, here we go. Open nine to eight. So we're inside. Paid for the ticket, 69 krona. That's close to 10 euros, uh, which I suppose is not bad these days. And we're now walking to the top. This first part is a little boring. Looks like this is the entrance to the town getting a little dark in this section. I'm gonna switch off for the moment till we get out to the spire. It's uh, quite steep stairs. Don't know whether you can see that in the dark. There are a few places to stop and rest as well and just take a look out. This part of the climb is, is okay, but there's nothing special about it. It's just a climb into a church steeple. Looks like the bell is about to ring. I think they should have probably warned people coming up that the bell goes off and you're walking right past it because there's always a lot of small kids in here and it looked like they weren't enjoying that bell. So we're not at the spire yet, but we are going up now. So there's the beginning of the spire. Right, so here's the beginning of the spire, and here we go. Pretty windy. It gets narrower as you go up. And uh, what I've seen on other pictures is that as you get to the very top, only one person at a time can go, so it can get queued up here during uh, rush hour, as it were. There is a really good view from here though, I don't know whether you can see that. The walk is not too bad actually, steps are fairly shallow. Uh, it's not too bad for small kids as well I'd say. As I said, it does get narrower so towards the top you stop a lot more. And squeeze past people.
<laughs> so we're almost at the top. Then it's my turn to go to the top now. It gets narrow, look at this. Okay. It's really narrow. Like, I can hardly fit up here. Look at this. I don't know whether you can see that stuff, but that's the end step. That's it. And I'm at the end there. Whoa. <laughs> Let's go back down. Backwards. Okay. 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 Right at the top, it's really not a lot of space, but you do get to go up to the top. Heading back down now. So it's really narrow at the top, really crowded. Only one person can definitely go at a time. I found it difficult actually after I got to the top to turn around to come back down. So I needed to step backwards. And the, uh, it's difficult to look behind you as well. And as I said, I think when it's uh, a lot of people, there can be a queue for people waiting there to go up and come back down again. If you don't fancy going all the way up to the top, you can always stop at this level and just uh, take a look at the view here. Wow, okay, those bells were really loud and I think a little warning to people with small children might be actually worthwhile. So that was the Church of Our Savior and the Spiral. In uh, summary, I'd say for 69 krona, almost 10 euros, it's, it's worth the view. Uh, and climbing to the, the top is fun, going around the spiral staircase and getting to the very top. So that's fun and uh, I think uh, anybody would enjoy that. Unless you're afraid of heights, then you might find it a bit difficult. The climb is not too bad. And for me, um, I'm not particularly fit, but I made it without an issue. There are also places between where you can actually stop. Once you get to the spiral, you can't actually stop unless you just stop on the staircase. But as I said, uh, I think when it gets crowded and during the tourist season, there's going to be a queue going around the spiral as well. So I'm going to head off from here now because I think they're setting up for some church feast. I'm going to head off and uh, go off to the next spot. So it looked like they were getting ready for some type of festival or celebration there. So I just asked uh, one of the people setting up, what it was and apparently in Denmark there's some church feast where they have uh, where kids can dress up I think it's related to carnival and Lent etc I'm not Christian so I'm not uh, into all those holidays so and, and know what they are but I think it's to do with Lent and uh, carnival in other places apparently kids dress up and they uh, have this little like a barrel where in the old days they used to put a cat in now apparently it's just candy and they smash it to take the candy apparently so uh, a little bit like piñata, cross between piñata and carnival it looks like, but it seemed like they were going to have fun. So, quick history of the church which we just went to. Uh, the spire was eventually completed in 1752, if I read correctly. Uh, it, the church had actually started a long time before that, in the 1600s, I believe it was. Um, urban myth, uh, which is absolutely not true, is the final architect who created this spire uh, jumped off the top of it and killed himself. Uh, because apparently the spire goes counterclockwise instead of uh, clockwise, which is inauspicious or something like that. So he apparently jumped off, but that's not true. Uh, it's an urban myth. <coughs> the church for tourists uh, is most famous for the spire and being able to climb to the top. It does have the largest uh, Carolin, Carolin, I think. I'll put the thing in the description, but it has the largest one in Northern Europe. Uh, and as you saw, the bells are really loud. Anyway, let's head off now. So. From the Church of Our Savior, the Spiral Church, what we're going to do is we're going to head to Christiania, which is again about another 5-10 minutes walk from here. 
uh, and we're going to go a little bit inside Christiania. Now inside Christiania you can't film in a lot of places or on the main street where they have um, all the people selling uh, the, the dodgy stuff. But there are places still on the outside, inside Christiania, where you can film and there's some interesting stuff there, so I'm going to take you there now. So this is the entrance or one of the entrances into Christiania and this is probably the one which most uh, tourists will come through. There's another one on the other side and there's some through the back parks as well. But these are the arches into Christiania. This is actually what I was going to come and see here in Christiania mostly. And this is a sculpture made out of reclaimed rubbish. And it's made by an, arch an artist named Thomas Dambo. And he has an internet site as well where you can see his other work. But he has work around the world. And uh, most uh, famously, the giants, which he's created around Copenhagen and um, Denmark. And they're all made out of uh, recycled or reclaimed wood and uh, they all have a different uh, theme as it were towards them and they're basically trolls so this is one of them which you can find fairly easily if you're here just for 24 hours it's in christiania and as you come into christiania through that gate uh, it's on the right hand side so i'm going to head down in christiania towards uh, what's known as pusher street but i'm not going to go in there because it actually is a no photographing area and I don't think there's anything that interesting for me per se uh, but I will go and take a little bit of a walk around inside and let you know what it's like. The area does have a bit of an edgy vibe if you've uh, lived in London or if you've been to London it feels a little bit like a rundown area of London uh, but it is quite a tourist attraction of course. You've all probably heard this story before a million times, but Christiania used to be an abandoned naval base, which in the 70s uh, was taken over by a hippie movement and created into a free town. And it's uh, made its own little city uh, in the middle of Copenhagen here, and they have their own bylaws. So they're, they're supposed to not have laws, but they do have a few bylaws, etc. Um, but it's mostly um, free. And I understand, if I understand correctly, you have to actually apply here to get a piece of land to be able to build and uh, it's basically a um, hippie community that's uh, become more or less a pretty trendy hip community. It does have a edge to it though and in the evenings it definitely has an edge to it. From what I can tell apart from the street they call Pusher Street photography is actually okay uh, here um, but you need to stay away from Pusher Street. I think they, they, they get a little um, um, not aggressive, but I think they get a little touchy if you take photographs in there. Um, up until recently, uh, I think they didn't used to have that much of an issue. Uh, but um, a few years ago, uh, there used to be um, a bit of a push from the Copenhagen or the Danish police, etc. To, to stop uh, some of the drug uh, uh, stuff going on here. And they tightened up a bit and they have uh, raids and stuff, so they're a little bit more... Um, careful I think. It's a nice place to walk around in. I think in the evenings they have an area as well back there where they have a lot of um, bars, nightlife. In the summer I've heard they have concerts and there's places like this which host venues. So this hall over there that you can see that I know hosts venues for uh, events like um, I think Science and Cocktails was hosted there once in some of these warehouses. There's also some nice, there's also at least one nice restaurant in one of these as well. So it's worthwhile doing a little bit of research, coming to explore Christiania a little bit, uh, if you're up to it and uh, if you have time, of course. Now with 24 hours, I don't have time to do a lot more here. So I'm going to head off from here up to the canal and walk along the canal up towards uh, the opera, etc. So let's find our way out and get back onto our tour. If you are in Copenhagen for 24 hours, even for 24 hours, one thing to note is the weather here changes uh, quite quickly. So it can be sunny and uh, a bit chilly one minute and then the wind can blow clouds up and it can be like really rainy and uh, cold and um, be prepared. So have at least a rain jacket, a light rain jacket that you can put on or an umbrella because it's uh, very changeable. And I noticed the clouds rolling in now, whereas in the morning when I landed, it was blue sky. One final point to note as we exit Christiania, which is that people can find it a little bit edgy. And if you do find this type of thing uncomfortable with the 
kind of dilapidated buildings and a kind of a rundown area kind of vibe. What I'd suggest is don't come too early in the morning. I'm actually here quite early in the morning and it's pretty empty. I'd suggest that you uh, come a little bit later when there's a little bit more people around, a little bit more tourists around, which will make it feel a little bit more uh, um, welcome. I'm heading towards the channel between um, Amar Island and Copenhagen North, and I'm going to walk along that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to walk along that and then I'm going to cross the bridge uh, down towards uh, Konglitz Zutov and head off from there towards the Little Mermaid. I'll put all of this down in the description with a link to a Google Maps uh, map uh, that you can use as an itinerary and as a little bit of directions if you want to do this same tour. Uh, so let's see, we're heading that way, which is towards the uh, channel from what I can tell and then we'll continue from there. All along this area of Christian's Hub and you get these pretty little buildings and uh, you get uh, the colors uh, on all the little houses. Now, what I've understood is Christian's Hub and was built by the king uh, at the time to house uh, independent merchants. Uh, and that's also the reason the church was built, the one that we went to. It was built uh, for the merchants so that they had a place to worship. But this whole area was built uh, for that reason. And uh, I've read somewhere that it was actually modeled on Amsterdam uh, by order of the king. He wanted something to look like Amsterdam after going there. And if you have time, there's actually some nice little streets and some nice areas around Christianshaven to uh, have a walk. The uh, canal here that goes through Christianshaven is quite nice. There's a lot of uh, private boats here from what I can tell. Uh, and uh, they are, I believe, in use from what I can see from inside the boats. It's nice on a sunny day. I've just figured out I'm on the wrong side of the canal. I need to be on that side over there so that I can get to uh, where the bridge is to cross over to Kongen Uh So let's uh, head that way. Oops, need to watch myself. Don't step on the trip on the cobblestones and fall into the water. There you go, there's a canal boat too. I don't think I'll have time to take one of those, but that's if you have a little bit longer, that's actually an option to do as well, is to take a canal boat tour. I think it's an hour long from what I read and you can uh, see quite a lot. Uh, but with the cold breeze, um, even though it is sunny, I'm not quite sure how much, how much I'd enjoy it anyway. So. I'm going to stick to walking today. Oh, by the way, if you're an avid kayaker, I read that uh, in the summer months, even in the winter months, I guess as well, but in the summer months, there's a place called Kayak Republic, also near Christianshaven, where you can rent a kayak uh, and you can uh, kayak around the canals and the channels of uh, Copenhagen. So if you're into that and if you have the ability to do that, I think that might be quite fun. And there's one of those kayakers I was talking about. Back on track on the right side of the canal. Or the left side of the canal, what direction I'm walking, but on the right side towards where I want to go. If you walk along the canal that cuts through Christianshaven, uh, so you can come out through Christiania, walk straight across to the canal, walk across it to the other side, then walk alongside it. Uh, you follow it around and you get to, over there, you'll get to a bridge called the Christing Bridge, which leads you into New Haven. So I think it's worth saying again, you need to really dress properly in Copenhagen. Like, I think I underdressed a bit. I'm feeling a little chilly. The wind is freezing. It's, it makes it feel like it's like minus one and the humidity brings out that little damp cold that goes straight to your bones. And I stopped for some photographs and my fingers are frozen. So do dress properly if you're coming out even for 24 hours. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed this part of the 24 hours in Copenhagen. If you have, please do give me a thumbs up. That really helps YouTube to spread this around to other people so that they can enjoy this too. And of course, the next part of this is coming up shortly. So please do subscribe and you'll be notified when that comes up. That should be in about a week's time. See you later, guys.